Well, two years ago, I had just started at KHN really as the first dedicated data reporter here. And Libby Rosenthal had also just started as the editor in chief. And it was around the time of the 2016 election. And we were having a lot of conversations around drug pricing because it was such an important issue in the elections. We wanted to look at how the pharmaceutical industry was trying to influence legislation that might affect drug prices. So the pharmaceutical industry is a highly lucrative and also highly regulated industry. And Capitol Hill, Congress, has a lot of influence over legislation that can affect their industry, such as what they are able to say in advertising and how quickly their drugs can get approved and go to market and what Medicare pays for drugs. So we know the pharmaceutical industry seeks influence on Capitol Hill as it's debating this legislation. And they do it in a couple of ways. They do uh, lobbying, which we've done some stories on and is important. And they also try and seek influence through campaign contributions. The drug makers give money to members of Congress, basically. Um, some might call it bribery, but it's, it's a way that they, it's not often a huge amount of money, these direct contributions, but it's a way for them to sort of tap the lawmakers on the shoulder and say, you know, there's more where this came from and my lobbyist will be in to see you soon. So we wanted to track that money. And every transaction, every campaign contribution is tracked and reported by the Federal Election Commission. And they turn all of those reports into data. And you can go to their website and you can search to see sort of totals and you can look at the individual reports, but they also make all of that data available for download on their site. And so we wanted to be able to get all of the data and analyze it all at once rather than doing individual searches. I wrote a script in Python, which is a programming language, that automatically goes to the FEC site and downloads all of their files onto our computer and then loads all of those files up into our database. And it's huge. It's a huge multi-table database. For the 2016 cycle alone, there were uh, more than 20 million transactions. And there's uh, more than 100 different kinds of transactions. And there's thousands of committees that are both giving and receiving money. So we had to sift through all of this. It took us a long time to figure out how to parse all of that information accurately. Which committees are associated with pharmaceutical companies? Which committees are associated with members of Congress? Which types of transactions are we looking for? And at one point, I actually walked a few blocks over to the headquarters of the Federal Election Commission to meet with their chief data architect so that he could help me sift through all of these different types of transactions and make sure that I was looking at it the right way. And he was very nice and helpful. So that was how we sort of have been in this process for uh, two years now, of like getting this data and looking through it and looking for the, those political action committees that are registered by drug makers and who they're giving to. And we've written some stories from this data about particular drug makers and particular members of Congress. Um, but we really wanted to be able to put up something on us on our site that allows everybody to look for their member of Congress and to see how much money their member of Congress was getting from this industry, particularly when drug pricing is such an important part of the election conversation. And so that's how we did it.